Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. It's time for another episode of Corner of the Galaxy from the Box, the show that gets you behind the scenes of the LA Galaxy and into the minds of soccer reporters and MLS experts. Your hosts for the day are Corner of the Galaxy's Josh Gessman and LA Times soccer reporter Kevin Baxter. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Monday, February 6th. LA Galaxy get through their first, I guess, real preseason game. We'll call it a real preseason game. Uh, 2-1 loss to New York City. We're going to talk about that. Some festivities before the game some stuff happening during the game and of course a lot of stuff going on now outside of that game as it leads up to the Rose Bowl game we have more information on the Rose Bowl we're going to talk to you about the LA Galaxy's kit release uh, we also have a rumor out there that we're going to dive a little deeper into and if you haven't heard it yet we're going to make you wait for it towards the end of the show because that's how we roll in order to help me with all of this, we're glad to have him back. We're going to call him our fearless, uh, our fearless, uh, what is it, NASCAR reporter? I think NASCAR reporter, Mr. Kevin Baxter. Kev, uh, how, how, how are you doing after seeing people drive around in circles for a couple hours? Yeah, I don't even know why I'm here. I'm a, I'm a motorsports writer, and, and so I got my friend Tony Stewart here to, uh, to share the pod with us. We just, uh, Tony and I just got done putting the Valvoline Preparation H State Corral Depends Diaper Chevrolet behind the wall and came over here to, uh, to I got my... Daniel Suarez t-shirt here. Daniel, if you pull back and you can see that, Daniel's my favorite NASCAR driver. My f- previous favorite driver, by the way, was was this fellow right here. This is uh, Lightning um, McQueen. I'm, I'm, ver- saw- I'm very well aware of, of Lightning McQueen. In our household, he's more he's more godlike, really, than anything. Yeah, it's stickers. They call him stickers. I saw him win the Piston Cup, by the way. <laughs> he yeah. did what in his cup? That is the best joke in all of uh, of Cars uh, movies. Is in the first one. He's like he's like he's won five uh, what he's won five Piston Cups. He did one in his cup. Great, great, great line. Anyway, yes, works on two levels. Yes, yes. I did. I did go to the Coliseum. I, I'm going to put Tony's going to go back to the garage here. Oh, bye, Tony. Um, um, I did c- go to NASCAR this weekend at the Coliseum. It was 150 laps. Of the Coliseum floor, which works out to 37 and a half miles. It's basically the commute from Huntington Beach downtown. Took them over two hours to do it. There were 16 yellow flags. The winner, uh, Martin Truex Jr., uh, finished the race exactly where he started it, on the floor of the Coliseum. Oh, uh, very good. 16 yellow flags. It was traffic. It was a slow speed chase. Um, and two hours to go 37 minutes. It, it is. It's just like the L.A. freeway. I was going to say, exactly. it's very L.A. That's, that, that, is, that is the most L.A. It could possibly it, be. And you think about it when, you know, there are, they, they put 27 full-size NASCAR racers on that, the narrowest track, n- no banking. It was borderline kind of ridiculous. A quarter mile track, think about the, the the track at your local high school, the track that the track and field team uses. That's a quarter mile. Yeah. Those guys were driving around that track for 37 miles, 150 laps, banging into each other. Yes. Um. There was, there was one driver, Austin Dillon, who finished second, said that, he was hit so often that at one point the wheel came out of his hands. It was bumper cars. <laughs> it was called the buzz, the bush clash at the Coliseum. It was really the crash at the Coliseum. Of Very Tom good. Lord. Very. Are you good with all of your NASCAR jokes now? You think you've? you've yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We're gonna go back to soccer now. I'm gonna bring okay. in this Alex is, uh, Morgan. Alex Morgan's gonna come in and join okay. us for a while. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad you were mentioning Lightning McQueen. I am. I am off to the happiest place on earth tomorrow too. So we got to keep this semi brief. I got to get a good rest tomorrow because I'll be wrestling a three year old. Uh, and possibly, did you tell me Larry Morgan not on Twitter will yep. also be gracing the the Poss- happiest poss- the Magic possibly Kingdom? Possibly a seventy three year old in addition to the three year old. Th- those both make me exhausted just thinking about it. So I will have to. Uh, I'm sure I'll have to run into Mr. Larry Morgan. He was texting me today, by the way. So um, I know. I know you he's alive d- and well. Go, go on the the. the- 
tin, the cups, whatever, the teacups, and spin them around, see what I, happens. I am not a big fan of things that spin around like that. Not a not a big fan. All right, let's talk about the galaxy. We're done. Uh, that was it. I was that was about as long as I could take. Can if I told you, and I know you could probably do the math, but if I said the LA no, galaxy, not me. No, I still don't understand numbers. But how I can't do math and I can't do names. How many days until the LA Galaxy play at the Rose Bowl? Do you know the exact number? I know the exact number. If you were no, no counting. 20. 19. 20. So it's 19 technically, right? Oh, yeah. So, okay. Yes. Okay. It, it comes out tomorrow. I, I would just like to say, however, that um, it, it seems like the LA Galaxy, and certainly if you watched that game and the way they played, um, I wouldn't say they're exactly ready for the season to start. And the season is less than really three weeks away. Um, it feels like a tremendous amount of work still needs to be done for the LA Galaxy. We'll talk about the one rumor that's in there, and I don't even think that's a... That's a huge deal. That's not like the DP signing everybody's sort of expecting them to make. Um, this seems like this is sort of a step there, but it seems like there is a lot, a, a long way to go for the LA Galaxy uh, and and not a long time to, to, to get there. I mean, it feels like a, a bridge too far at this time. I think everybody should expect that the LA Galaxy will not have a full roster for their first game of the season. It, do, it That doesn't seem likely. And they're playing LAFC, the, the reigning champion, the crosstown rival. Can't get any bigger. At the Rose Bowl, first game, uh, I think, on Apple TV, right? Or one of the first games. First weekend, certainly, on Apple TV. This is kind of the lid lifter. Um, and this is a, a game the Galaxy called. They said, let's go to the Rose Bowl. And we've sold 69,000 tickets, I understand, by now. Let's, let's go um, to it. Our, our buddy Mike Gray actually had this, uh, this information this morning for the striker. He said, the Galaxy have confirmed that February 25th season opening El Trafico versus LAFC at the Rose Bowl is 75% sold out with the capacity at about 90,888. That number is close to the club record of 69,255 set in 1996 and puts LA within range of the MLS attendance record good good scoop there mr mike graves you're working out at the uh, at the gym tonight so um yeah how do you know he's working out at the gym because he said so in the chat room before we started oh okay oh hey mike yeah there you go so this is so so people are going there's no way and i saw it in the chat room beforehand people are going there's no way that the rose bowl is 75 percent sold out already i believe it do you believe it i was told by dan cordemash from mls at the mls media day which is a month ago now that at that time a month ago they had sold over fifty thousand tickets. So yeah, I believe it. And and the galaxy are starting to kind of hype that. By the way, Mike, put the anchor and the big tire back because I'm going to use them when I get done. <laughs> um, here's the thing is, and it's it's very well sort of laid out in our chat room. And I know I've talked to a lot of people, so it's anecdotal, so you can't really put it. But we know that a lot of galaxy fans bought tickets uh, for this, and we also know that there's a at least some, whether it's a vocal minority, and we'll talk about sort of the conditions inside the stadium at Dignity Hill Sports Park and how many people were there, that type of thing, and see if we can gauge any of that. I'll, I'll warn everybody, preseason games are difficult to judge, but there certainly were some differences in some of this. Um, but you can say that. I would bet that there are people, and I've seen people say it, hey, I bought six tickets. I'm not going, and 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 I'm not selling them to somebody else, so somebody else can fill it up. So yeah, explain why they're 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 not going to resell the tickets when they can make a bundle. Yeah, it's basically the boycott. It's the idea to show that they're not showing up, right? So this is so a they fine, have to show empty seats. They have to show. I mean, here's the deal: is you and I know how MLS does tickets in general, and it is shady. Right. I mean, it is there's no reality between the number of tickets they say have been distributed and the the butts that are actually in the seat. There is no comparison well, between those two. The, the way I always um, try to explain it is it's tickets distributed. That means you have a set number of seats in the stadium and each seat has a ticket. If you distribute those tickets that you can claim that as as, as that ticket having been distributed you can claim it as attendance. So what happens is if you have twenty seven thousand seats at that at Dignity Health Sports Park, and you've sold 10,000, you can take the other 17,000 and drop them from a plane. They have been distributed. <laughs> right. That doesn't mean 17,000 or 27,000 people at the game. Yeah, and we know that there are plenty of teams within Major League Soccer who you take the advantage of that. I mean, the Galaxy do, LAFC does, other teams around the league also do that because there's a big difference, and you and I know this, there's a big difference between butts in the seats and the attendance that's announced, right? And usually it feels like there's a five or 6,000 person difference in most cases whenever you see this. Some of those are legitimate sellouts, and you can be like, man, there aren't too many uh, open seats around here. Um, so you can sort of take a look. So do I believe that 75% of the tickets have been sold? I do. Or at least distributed? I do. I believe that that's a real number. Uh, and if you think about it from the LA Galaxy point of view, Kevin, and you talk about distributing things, 
there's probably a real impetus for them to show that they've sold X number of tickets in this date right now to show how well things are going. But that that. We, we've we already theorized on this show many times that we expect that with the boycott going on, with sort of the way uh, this offseason has gone, that the L.A. Galaxy fans are likely to be outnumbered in in, in that stadium at their home field um, in what, as one uh, supporter once put it, is a victory celebration for uh, the noisy neighbors across the way. Right. This is giving them everything they wanted. I'm, I would be amazed if Apple and MLS didn't ask this to be part of this kickoff right to to sort of be like we need a big event what's bigger than an el trafico to kick off a season and what's bigger than putting it in like the rose bowl wouldn't that be fun doesn't that seem like a pitch that comes from corporate media and apple down to the la galaxy and then it's sort of the la galaxy's decision to sort of take that and run with it i i like it though and and part of the impetus for this or maybe maybe the idea that the, the galaxy could pull this off was the summer exhibition with Real Madrid and Juventus at the Rose Bowl, which sold sold out. And uh, th- that was put on by the Galaxy. Remember that whole summer tour was uh, organized by AEG. That went really well. And Chris Klein told me that that was, once they got past that, it was like, hey, this this worked out pretty well. Whether they were thinking about this game or not by then, I, I don't know. But I when, when they announced it, I thought it was a pretty good idea. You know, go back to where we started. Our first game was at the Rose Bowl. We started at the Rose Bowl. You're, you're probably right. It, it probably wasn't an and. An, an idea original to the galaxy, but the galaxy to their credit took it. And and I thought they did something really nice with it. Now, unfortunately from the time that idea started to now LAFC has won the supporter shield. It's won MLS cup. It's fans are super motivated. They're on fire. The team is playing really well. They've got some big name players. Um, and they're going to a 90,000 seat stadium. The galaxy on the other hand struggled. They're in the midst of their worst title drought ever. Um, and, there's a fan boycott. In a sense, this couldn't be a better time for LAFC to play in a 90,000 seat stadium in LA and couldn't be a worse time for the Galaxy. It's sort of the perfect storm. It feels that way. I muted myself and then forgot to unmute myself. Um, it, it feels that way. It fe- also feels that uh, I think, and rightfully so, and whether this is Greg, v- this is this is my opinion on this. Whether this is Greg Vanny sort of uh, flexing his muscle on this, he refuses to be rushed on this, and you can sort of tell how he's building this team in this offseason. Is we need to use all the days that we have in this opening window to make and sort of fill out this team, and the first six games, seven games do not matter to us in terms of we need to make sure we get the signings right. And quite honestly, it's something that I think we've been critical of the Galaxy rushing into signings. We talked about Douglas Costa, yes, last year and sort of like him needing to be in. And even Greg Vanny was like, I need him in before. I want my DPs in beforehand because we need to get everything together and do stuff. And then Douglas Costa doesn't play for most of the first half of the season with injuries and everything else. So it really feels like this time either Vanny's flexing his muscle or the Galaxy are having real problems bringing players in. I don't know which one it is. Well, Um, here's where he's right. and Here's where he's wrong. He's right because why rush it? You know, last year, he's one thing that Vanny has been very consistent about in his entire coaching career is the season in MLS did not start until the last 10 games last last year with 10 games to go. Guess what happened? He brought in Ricky Puig and 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 Gaston Brugman and and look what happened Um, and, and Caceres. Look what happened. They made the playoffs. They made that run. They were dead. They were toast with 10 games to go. They got into the playoffs. Vanny was right on that. Here's where he's wrong. He doesn't have a summer transfer window. He can't bring in a Caceres or a Ricky Pooge or a, a Gaston Brugman. He can't bring those guys in this year. So, And the game on the 25th counts just as much as a game in September or October. They all count the same in the standings. Right. So, yes, you know, there's that, that push at the end. But here's another thing that makes Vanny's idea maybe perhaps better. Um, I don't know if you saw the story in The Athletic today, but Paul Tenorio writing that the playoff field could be expanded to, to – 19, uh, 18 teams, nine in each conference. I like how you take the thing that I had that was going to wrap up the end of the show. It was the very last thing talking about the playoffs and you throw did, it in the first segment. Did, did you tell me about, you got to give me a run. I mean, I, I mean, we did, we did get to it at the end. You just weren't paying attention to that point. Cause there were so many slides in between there. You got a little bored. So yes, yes, I did tell you about it, but there it is. We get, we can talk about it is an 18 team playoff for 2023. And the worst part about this is one is they don't know what the answer is for the competition rules three weeks before the, an MLS season. Right. So it's sort of like, 
well, what strategy are you going to employ? And you were sort of talking about Greg Vanny employing a strategy saying, you know, if as long as you're in the top, you know, nine teams in each conference, you're going to be in the MLS playoffs. But what really is sort of horrible about this whole revamping and again, understand that they're revamping the playoffs because Apple TV wants more playoff games. They want to in, they want to increase the inventory of playoff games. So what do you do? You play a nine versus eight play in game. Right. And then you go to a best of three series to open the first round. Why do they make a joke of themselves constantly, Kevin? Like a best of three. Nobody does a best of three. That means you win the first two games and then you get a week off. I mean, it's ridiculous. And and, and Paul Tenorio, a, a great guy, I really like working with him. Um, and I don't know. This may have been facetious. This, he may have been trying to make a joke. It's hard to tell on social media. But he said, um, you know, if you have a an 18 team playoff field, nine in each conference, by the way, in the West conference, I think that would be you know, oh, it's 67% of the teams pretty much. Right? right. If you have all those teams getting in, he said, that's great. The more teams get in, the better we should uh, continue expanding the playoffs. And I think he might've been kidding, but if that's the truth, then let's just say February 25th, the playoffs open galaxy and LAFC playoff opener. Let's right. not even call it the regular season, which is everybody's in the playoffs and the playoffs start on opening day. Yeah. That's ridiculous. The playoffs should be a reward. There not should be. a participation trophy. Yeah, and uh, you know, again, this is this is them trying to feel out a two point five billion dollar deal over ten years. I mean, this is what you get. We talked about more games than ever as well, and now what that what do they want to do? They want to add an extra game again in the playoffs. They want to add you know two more extra games in that first quote unquote first round to make it a best of three instead of just a one a single elimination. Um, the the answer to this is always going to be home and away. That was always the answer to this until you got to MLS Cup, and I had no problem with MLS Cup going to the top seeded team, and they get to host it, and you get to play. You have to play at their house if you want to beat them. That always made sense to me. But trying to do this any other way, a best of three, and then single single elimination after that, it's too much change. It's too much fluctuation. It is discounting the regular season. And I'm not one who thinks that the dis that the regular season has to be the be all end all, and that like you know a supporter shield winner is is what we're all looking for here. That's not what we're looking for in Major League Soccer. We like playoffs, but you go into best of three and you waste a week on a best of three series. It is going to be a slog for people to pay attention to that. That is a pain. And you go back, yes, that's a big deal. There's going to be an international break in there probably as well. Bruce Arena always talked about the fact that the conference winner needs to get more of a reward, that there wasn't a reward for the conference winner in the past. There is now. There is that first round buy. But if you look at when, when Bruce's team won the Sporter Shield a couple of years ago in New England, they had the first round buy and there was an international break. They went like 36 days without playing a game after yep. playing a game a week yep. during the season. So it can backfire when you add all these games. But one thing you mentioned about Apple TV – running the show here, just throw an anecdote out there and, and people can make of it what they will. But um, it, it seems clear to me that Apple is is totally in charge of this. And the reason I say that is for the MLS Media Day, they had it in San Jose because Apple was there and they wanted to take the players to the Apple campus. That was a good idea. They had all the players there. Every team had at least one player and they had all the players there and they took them to the Apple uh, uh, campus and showed them around and did photos and all that. That was great. But they invited some media too, and we wanted to talk to people at Apple. And I had this great story idea that I had pitched to MLS weeks before. MLS was all into it. Apple said, no, we're not going to make those people available. We're just not going to do the interview. And MLS was like, we need to do this. We need to hype this. We In our social media, MLS, we need to do this. This is the LA Times. This is Hollywood. This is TV. We need to do this. And Apple was like, no, we're not really interested in it. And so my point is, here's was an idea that Apple – that. MLS said, we need, this is a soccer story that we need to do. We need to hype this. And Apple was like, it doesn't fit into our strategy. So we're not going to do it. And poor Don Garber looked like a kind of a scolded puppy sitting there on the carpet, you know, being told basically we'll make the decisions and we'll let you know when you can come in and participate. Yeah. And that's kind of how it looks. Well, whenever you go into one of the biggest companies in the world and you try to dictate stuff, I imagine that doesn't go over really well. Um, and, and certainly it's going to be uh, one of those interesting cases where you look at how this relationship develops. Very good if everything is going good, right? If MLS does the numbers they're expected to do, if they're able to grow the game. And 
I am less concerned about casual fans. I think there's plenty of inventory that's going to be shown on a regular basis for casual fans to be able to fall into these games and find the games. It's just you're not going to be able to casually follow the LA Galaxy. You can casually follow the league and maybe you find a team that you like and maybe that's going to eventually get you to buy into you know your Apple TV stuff, which I think is still a relatively good deal. Um, I should put out, point out that I get it for free. Um, uh, the MLS was nice enough to give me a free. Did they give you a free one too? Nope. Oh, you just got You just got to ask. They, they, they. Trust me. The LA Times. If the corner of the galaxy can pull it, I'm pretty sure LA Times can can pull it as well. But, see, I, I kind of disagree with you on the casual fan though. It, now, it depends. First of all, I, I do think Apple's calling the shots on this, and and I don't think it's an equal partnership right now. Um, and that's why I yes. think MLS will eventually cave for a lot of this stuff. But the casual fan, um, if Apple. If this app becomes just omnipresent and everybody has it and, and everyone, yes, then casual fans will find it because they'll be watching reruns of The Office and they'll skip over and it'll work just fine. Mm -hmm. But I go back to when LAFC launched and their partner was YouTube and they talked about this is great. We're going to go on, you know, we're going to go to a streaming service. You can watch it in the stadium. Um, this is tremendous. And this is where our fans are and they're young. And two years later, that deal ended and Larry Friedman, the president of LAFC, said we never really liked that because – people didn't channel surf and find the games. He right. said, where I live out in the, I guess he lives out in Calabasas or somewhere. He said, my neighbors, I'm the president of the team. My neighbors don't even know the team exists because mm -hmm. they're watching TV. They're watching cable and they're not finding the games. Yeah. But that's, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Kevin. I can tell you how many times I turn on my cable box anymore. It's not very often. All right. Well, and that's my point. If people are doing this as you are, see, I, I still have the rabbit ears and I watch black and white. I was just watching. I love Lucy over here. Right. Um, I'm not going to find that streaming stuff. That's why I'm not all hyped about whether or not I have an Apple TV package for free. Right. Well, I'm just I'm just saying that for most people now, they consume their TV via streaming. So thinking that you're just going to get casuals that stumble in, there's a bigger argument. And I would say a better argument, and Joe Tatino will make this argument, he'll, he will yell it loud and clear if you ask him, is he says that the LA Galaxy should be, should be on terrestrial radio, that they should be out there. He goes, because there are people driving around. What do you do whenever you're driving around? Yes, you, maybe you listen to satellite radio. Maybe you listen to local stations. Maybe you flip around to see what sports are on, what sports talk is on. You could stumble across an LA Galaxy uh, game, and that could get you sort of hooked into this whole ecosystem because that's one place i think people still channel surf sometimes not all the times yeah. you know i know you I, listen I, to sirius and i listen to sirius but you I, could stumble across stuff on sirius when you're looking i would i would agree with you i mean look at me i'm nine years older than death um so i'm not getting the streaming stuff on tv but i do listen to radio i i and consider i consider it to be very high tech that i have satellite radio and and we're in um, our cars you're in your car everybody yeah, in la is in it, their cars all the time. Sometimes you're driving 37 and a half miles around the floor of the Coliseum for two hours. What else are you going to listen to? I think Martin Truex had they had the Galaxy exhibition game on in, that, on on Saturday. That's probably that's probably what it was. Um, the, the, but but I, I I know what you're saying. I'm just saying that everybody pretends that this is completely behind a paywall, and it's not. Right. There are nationally televised games that will still be out there that will be available on your rabbit ears and your cable packages. Kevin, there are games that are going to be shown outside of behind the paywall and just on Apple TV. So if you're just go cruising into your Apple TV, it may suggest, hey, watch the L.A. Galaxy versus LAFC at the Rose Bowl right now. You can turn that on right now. It's for free. Right. And that whole first week is for free, too. There's some things there. Everybody pretends that this is going to stunt growth. I don't think it's going to stunt growth. I don't think there was a huge amount of growth from casuals anyway. I think it's mostly diehards. What they're hoping is that the people in Thailand who wanted to watch the game will, will and our, our MLS fans, because there are, uh, I get tons of hits from Thailand all the time, um, but that they're going to go in and they're going <laughs> to... That's for yeah. something else. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that, that they're going to go ahead and, and, and sign up. That there's people... I just did a, an interview with um, Tom, I think, Sparks, uh, who is over in the UK, and he covers MLS from the UK as a fan of Major League Soccer. And so he had me on, and I hopped on on a Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m., which was in the afternoon in his time, and we got to talk LA Galaxy Soccer, and he was very knowledgeable. So I have to imagine somebody like him is excited that, you what, know, this is going on. What a lonely existence, being the MLS reporter in England. <laughs> um, by the way, no one, I just thought, no one knows what rabbit ears are. I bet. They, they I, do. You want to see my you want to see my gramophone? No, nobody wants to. Nobody <laughs> so wants to see that, Kevin. I'm pretty now. sure you get in trouble for that now. Um, yeah. Let's see. Brendel gave us a five dollars super chat, and he and said you guys should definitely ask Greg and Chicharito of their opinions of likely being outnumbered at the Rose Bowl by our rival fans. Hashtag accountability. I mean, I think it's going to get asked. 
Uh, and certainly it's something, listen, Greg Vanny has already started to answer questions about this in his normal everyday press conferences. This is not something that goes away. Very unfair for him, by the way. And it's not unfair that we ask the questions because he's the only person that's being made available to us. Um, it just, it's, it's one of those things you're going to have to ask, uh, uh, in living color abroad says, uh, $2 super chat says, uh, already seeing a disconnect between Apple and MLS. I kind of, I mean, I agree. And Kevin, what you were saying as well is that, listen, you're not going to MLS is, is kind of, I think used to bullying some of these pieces around. Yes. ESPN is a giant company, but the guys who do soccer and that section that we're doing soccer is a smaller section. And so they're always hungry to sort of prove that soccer belongs on ESPN and all these other things. So it's like a smaller section of a larger company. So I feel like they were more like, we're going to boss you around a little bit. You try doing that with Apple and tell me how that works. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty well, sure that's not going to work great. And it's, I, and I don't know how, you know, how the, the chart is and who reports to who and all that. But Ted Lasso was on Apple TV plus, which I gather is a slightly different Apple TV thing. But, you know, th that's still not out yet. It was supposed to debut last fall, and Jason Sudeikis became the showrunner, and he's decided he's going to make this last season perfect, and so he's making a lot of changes. I don't see Apple TV or Apple TV Plus running to him and saying, come on, Jason, let's go. Let's get it going. No. Ted Lasso is the is the dog that wags the tail over there. Right, right. Um, and he says, I'm not giving it to you until I'm ready, and they're going, okay. I don't think it's going to work with Don Garber. If Garber says, geez, that's a lot of games. Maybe we shouldn't do that in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. No, not going to work. No, it's not. Uh, $5 super chat from Alexander. Uh, Alexander says, I worked as an EMT for three years. Is that one of those you can say thank you for your service? I feel like it should be. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Saving people's lives. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and Alexander says, the radio was a lifeline. No satellite radio in those rigs, though. So see, they had, I mean, again, if there are people who are delivering stuff, which is definitely a sign of the times within our economy. I mean, how many Amazon trucks do you see? How many food delivery places? I'm sure some of our listeners do the job. We know we have a UPS listener uh, who listens to our shows religiously. Um, and they, that's what he listens to. He listens to our podcast. He listens to the radio as he's out there delivering and driving all day. We know we have those people. And so you know that that's a way into people's lives is via the radio. I think you can still capture people because you still have Fox. You still well, have some of those outside of this, this locked box that everybody pretends is super locked. It's not super locked. There's lots of games. I think there's like 40% inventory that's still outside of the package itself. Two things. One is, first of all, uh, when I did talk to some people, what? No, one? I'm holding. I was counting for you. You oh, said one, okay. so I'm ready. Yeah, I, I, like and the numbers confuse me. Right. Um, when I did talk to some people at Apple TV about uh, the idea that you can stream this on your phone, and, and that's what YouTube TV people were saying with LAFC. Hey, you can watch the replays in the stadium. I brought that up with Apple, and they said, man, I hope they don't bring their phones to the game. We want them watching the game. There's no experience like the game. Watch the game and watch your, your TV later. I thought that was kind of uh, an interesting comment. The other thing I wanted to ask you, what was the EMT's name? Jason, did you say? Uh, Alexander. Wow, I wasn't even close. Yeah. Unless it's Jason Alexander, then it's... No. Kind of Is that how your mind works? Yes, sometimes. Okay. Uh, okay, Alexander, if you're still listening, tell us how many people have you saved. I'd really like to know. <laughs> Is that is that is that something that you brag that, the about? The serious question... Is no, that that, like, do you get no, a little I, mark? We should, we should applaud him when he tells us the number, but... I've always, I mean, that that's that's where I want to, before I die, which could be in the next five minutes, I want to save someone's life just to say I saved someone's life. That must be so cool if that's what you do on a daily basis. You save oh, people's Kevin. lives. Oh, Kevin, you you're already cool have job. saved so many lives with this podcast. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, yeah. you could probably list at least one or two people that you have saved you know, just on this podcast. How many people have considered suicide after listening to this? this I we mean, should have that suicide hotline number at the end. With the way the galaxy's off season is going, that might yes. be a wise thing to do. No, no jokes aside, but... Um, um, anyway, so that's uh, that's sort of where it's So, yes, I understand that. I understand the playoff games. I know why they're doing it. It's the same reason they're doing, you know, uh, League's Cup is increase inventory, increase the, the visibility in North uh, in North America between, uh, you know, Mexico and the United States and having these games. And then, you know, there maybe there's U.S. Open Cup games as well. I mean, the amount of games and I know everybody's going to talk about it. Every coach is going to talk about it in this preseason saying, hey, we could play as many as 50 games. The bottom line is most people won't play 50 games, right? Some of those people are going to get eliminated in the League's Cup in the first round and they're not going to play more than two games. And that's it. So you can't say that, you know, you're going to play 50 games. But the increase, and I think Hercules Gomez was even saying something 
hey, is MLSPA all happy with all these added games that are that are getting put on? And I, I, I'm sure, Kevin, everybody's pay was increased uh, uh, the per no. game. They just took it and said, you know what? We're playing a lot more games, so we're just going to increase the per no. game, right? Absolutely not. I saw a quote from a European player the other day. This is happening in Europe as well. And he said that it's absolutely ridiculous. The fixture crunch, he said that the players are dead on their feet and 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 they can't possibly even contemplate the idea that they're going to play as well and the game will be as well played as in the past. Another thing is you talk about, you're right, not everyone's going to play 50 games. San Jose is not going to play 50 games. Oh, how, da- how dare you do that to they the San are not Jose gonna play 50 games. But, you know, we've talked a lot about the last team to repeat as champion was the Galaxy in 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's even, and LAFC is dealing with that this year. You know, once you win the championship, there are the raises that come in, there are bonuses. People, uh, you know, want want a more prominent role, whatever it is, money increases. So it's very hard. But now if you're, let's just say the Seattle Sounders are the best team in the league. Okay. Right. So they go to the championship, they play all the playoffs. That means they're, they're going to be in CONCACAF Champions League. If they're the best team in the league, they probably go pretty deep in League's Cup and they probably play deep into the U.S. Open Cup. Maybe they don't win those things. Right. But the point is they play 50 games and they're going to come back next year. There's no way they're going to play uh, as well as they did that year. So the idea of a team repeating now is is even more of a pipe dream than it used to be. 2012 uh, was, if you remember, the LA Galaxy uh, came out in the first half of the season and basically were like, what? We're st- we won the MLS Cup. We're still hung over from that. Um, and then sort of turned it on, I think, starting in June. Everybody pretends it was a lot later than that. But it was like June where suddenly they became, again, the, the MLS Cup winning side and snuck into that last, play- last place in the playoffs. And if you remember, that was the first year that somebody, the, the top seed, was going to host MLS Cup. 2011 was a prearranged in Los Angeles MLS Cup, and the LA Galaxy happened to be there for it. So they got that home game. Then 2012, there was only one team that they could host against, and that was Houston. Uh, and so you needed Houston to go all the way th- all the way through the Eastern Conference and win that side, and you needed the Galaxy to go all the way through the, the Western Conference on the other side, and it ended up happening, and they ended up playing each other. Right. I mean, so that's if you remember sort of how that went, it was these hangovers that sort of lead. But I remember talking to the guys during that 2020 2012 season and they're like, listen, we're exhausted. Like we didn't stop playing until December, you know, 7th or 2nd or whichever it was. 2014 was December 7th. I don't remember what 2012, what the date was, but we didn't you know, we didn't stop playing until this. And then basically we're turning right around. And then they in those days too, Kevin, you have to remember they would go overseas, right, for like their Mm -hmm. little their little press junkets that they would do and go and different places and play some games and then they'd be done and then preseason would start and they would do all this stuff over and over again so was anyway 2012 the rainy day was that the rainy one remember the one that was played in like a quagmire i'm trying to remember it may have 2014 been. 2014, 2014 was, was raining too wasn't it but it, no but that was that the field at least was fine that was the one that went to extra time yeah um but it was either 2011 or 2012 i think it was 2012 which was just it was just pouring all day it was it was a lot of rain i remember i remember that particularly so anyway so that's what we have there now uh game la galaxy take on new york city um this was a 2-1 loss for the la galaxy Uh, a a last minute penalty kick by douglas costa was saved um, otherwise, it would have been a tie game. Galaxy played, I think, much better in the second half than in the first half. But we did tell you there were protests going on. We did tell you that there were things going on. I was tipped off to a to a protest happening at about 5 p.m. ahead of things out in the in the Champions Plaza. Um, out Legend, in, Legends, Legends Plaza. Plaza. Sorry, Legends Plaza. I don't want to say Champions Plaza. I said that in a but in Legends Plaza. Um, and so they walked right up the main, maybe about anywhere between, I'm guessing, anywhere between 50 and 100 uh, people were out there. Uh, with signs that said Klein out, and I did my best to pull these pull these pictures and try to find the people who actually like took them and then give them cl- credit for theirs. Uh, one of the signs uh, I thought this was the I always like punny signs, Kevin. Um, in decline uh, since 2014. That's a good that's a good pun. Um, I enjoyed that. Um, so they were out there as people drove into the stadium, flares going, everything else. Uh, they were standing at the front of basically uh, Legends Plaza and greeting people as they drove up. Then, if you looked inside the stadium, and some of these were taken during the 70th minute, uh, you could see in the supporter sections, things very, very... I mean, maybe there's like 50 people total in the entire Victoria block on that uh, on that north side. Maybe that's a good question. You know, you can sort of see in other areas just how how blank a lot of these areas were. And listen... 
I'll be the first one to admit, Kevin, preseason games are usually atrocious for attendance anyway, right? It's not like anybody would be surprised that nobody shows up for a preseason game. It's usually pretty sparse. But who always shows up for a preseason game is supporters groups. And that was missing. And you didn't well, see that. Here's a question. So they're lined up outside the stadium. They're doing their thing. It, it looks like a, a strike. I know as a big labor guy, you never walk, you never cross a strike line, right? Never, ever do that. A picket line. What about this? I mean, what do the supporters say? Are, are they just expressing their opinion? And if you want to go to the game, fine. Yes. Are, are they asking you not to cross the line? I mean, I think they're asking that. And let me let me be clear before I get in trouble, because I'm going to try to speak for what I've heard. OK, so maybe I get this wrong. But uh, Andrew from um, from LA Riot Squad was on our podcast. You know, he talked about this. He said, you know, if you want to go, go. Um, you're not going to get like beat up. You're not going to get all those things, right? It's, there's not going to be an issue with it. Go and do do your thing, because we're not if you don't believe if you don't want to join the boycott, then you don't have to. Right. And the whole deal. But I do think that there's going to be a frustration that sort of boils up. Here's the thing is, and I'll, I'll say this, um, the LA Galaxy, I believe, don't believe, or, or certainly AG don't believe that the supporters are capable of doing anything for a long period of time. And so I think they're trying to w wage a war of attrition here. I, I mean, I haven't been told, and I imagine I would have been notified by either supporters groups or the LA Galaxy or something, if AEG and the LA Galaxy had come back with solutions and answers to the, certainly the problems and the questions that the supporters groups had in that meeting. From what I've heard, that hasn't happened. And, and you well, and I talked about this. We, I don't know that necessarily we expect that there's going to be any answer. No, and, and I'll just kind of preview a little bit. We talked about this before. My newsletter, which will go up online at 6 a.m., the soccer newsletter in the LA Times, um, the lead item really takes issue with a lot of things the Galaxy are doing. It's... it's uh, it's, I, I don't know, I guess scathing. It's a scathing attack on the galaxy. But I, I mentioned that only just to talk about what you're talking about. It used to be, and I write this, it used to be the galaxy, at least I felt, they were cocky and arrogant. And, and with reason, they were good. Yeah. They were cocky and arrogant. Now they feel like, it, it feels to me like they're uncertain. They're tentative. And the response, rather than being, this is how we're going to do it and it's going to work, they kind of remind me of the Wizard of Oz. They're behind the curtain asking us to trust them or asking the supporters, I don't care, asking the supporters to trust them, but they're doing everything behind the curtain and there's no accountability. Yeah, it, it certainly, it certainly is interesting. I, again, we said it would be a staring contest. I think, I think the, the, that the front office is going to wait, that wait out the supporters because eventually I think this LA galaxy team is going to be okay. All right. I don't know how good because I can't really tell with the wingers and we'll talk about the rumor that's sort of coming. I can't really tell. Certainly the first half of this game and let we can sort of bring it into this. But certainly the first half of this game didn't seem like the LA Galaxy really had the pieces that they needed. Greg Vanny mentioned in his post game press conference, Kevin, explicitly that, you know, we really need wingers. Um, I don't know if any <laughs> I'm sure he knows that's his job to get them. So I'm, I'm, I imagine that they, they have some ideas in there. Uh, but coming out in the three, five, two, they had Chicharito and Jovalich up top. Um, Vanny said that he knew that they were going to struggle in that in that formation. But it was really about trying to get people fitness, trying to get them game time um, and trying to get it the appropriate amount of game time within that. Uh, that whole phrase. And so he was really trying to manage minutes more than anything else, which is why I think that they came out very disjointed, certainly in the first half. And, um, and Joey Naro did not play again. Did, did you? Uh, so if you go to Greg Vanny's post game press conference, there's questions about where and who own, like currently own his rights. Because well, I, I went back to FIFA about that. And FIFA's stance still is there is no transfer. That's all FIFA's asked to, to do is to say this transfer can go through right. or can't. And they said no. They really don't, unless there is a proposal put before them that said, hey, Julian Araujo, we found out he was actually born in Pakistan and he wants to play for a team in Pac you know, Then FIFA will rule on that. All right. that FIFA was asked to rule on was the transfer, and they said no. Yeah. So Greg Vanny's being a little bit um, unclear on what Julian Araujo's status is. He seems to suggest that that he is not necessarily back with the team. I don't know where he is. The Barcelona thing appears to be dead. Yeah, well, um, I mean... That's, it's kind of mysterious. It is It is interesting with that. And he says that 
it's not really he doesn't want to speculate on what it is and how it comes out because it's not really his job to like figure it out but they're trying to get Julian Araujo back basically on the LA Galaxy and to prove that he's back on the LA Galaxy I don't know if like money changed hands between Barcelona and the LA Galaxy in order for the transfer to go through I don't know if something happened and now things have to be undone or unwound but Julian Araujo currently according to Greg Vanny is not eligible to play on the LA Galaxy right now and maybe that's that's also okay Right. Because after all the whirlwind that he went through, uh, I said that kid deserves a bender in Vegas more than anything else. It's like, you you know what? Why don't you get away from soccer for a couple of days? Go, go, go to Vegas, come back and then you can come back and we can, you know, clear your head and do all the things because uh, we've talked about it. And I guess from our last podcast on Thursday, because they ruled on Friday, is we have to say, you know, FIFA ruled basically that the transfer was late and therefore it couldn't go through. That was that that was their rule, ruling and that's what was was put down. So now you have a kid who was 18 seconds away from going to Barcelona. Um, and I, I should be very, very clear. There is absolutely no guarantee that he's going to go to Barcelona in the summertime or ever again. Things change so much in world soccer, in needs and wants and positions that clubs are in and financial availabilities and different things, they were looking for a backup right back. Maybe in the summertime, a backup right back falls right into their laps. Maybe somebody develops from their academy and they're like, oh, this is where we need to go. We don't need Julian Araujo anymore. The bottom line is that Julian Araujo could have been 18 seconds from going to Barcelona and now he will never go there again in his life. And I'm sure he knows that. And I'm sure there's a part of him that's saying, I just have to work hard and I'll get back there, which is a great motivator. And Julian Rajo never suffers from motivation. I think he'll be okay. But the mind jumble that that has to do to you. Um, and Greg Vanny talked a little bit about it in his, in his post game, which was sort of like, here's a kid who was like really excited. And all of a sudden, yeah, it's going to happen. And I'm going to Barcelona. And then he's like, oh man, I got to find a place to live in Barcelona. And what do I do with pets? And what do I, what do I do with family members? And like all the, like there's all this stuff suddenly your brain is doing. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, you know, this is crazy. And then all of a sudden you find out you're not going, Kevin, that could have a real mental effect on, on somebody, anybody. And I know it would just mess with me like nobody's business. Well, one of the days last week, and I don't remember if it was Wednesday or Thursday, Wednesday, I think it would have been Wednesday because that was the day an announcement was expected. I believe Julian's family came up from Lompoc and they were all at the stadium. And the idea of there was going to be a little bit of a celebration there with everyone together. And, and that never took place. And, you know, it, you really wonder about Julian's psyche. Um, you're right. He doesn't suffer from motivation. He's a great kid. He works hard. But this is the move of a lifetime. Yep. And d does he look at it and say, Barcelona screwed up. I may never get back there again. Or, or, or it, does he say, you know what? The Galaxy didn't have my back. They didn't make it happen. Whatever. Whatever, you know, and you and I have talked about this. Barcelona gets the blame, but I'm, I'm also, I'm not, you know, there were a lot of changes in that deal at the last minute. Were those galaxy changes that slowed things down? Did the galaxy drag their feet in approving those changes? Did, did they hold up the paperwork? We don't know that part. But I, I wonder if there's a part of, uh, of Julian that's saying they didn't have my back. You know, they didn't make it happen. They could have made it happen. If I was if I was the golden boy, the guy that really loved, if I was Ricky Pooj, this would have happened. But it's right. me, and so it didn't happen. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's certainly uh, an interesting time. Um, again, Galaxy sc struggled in 3-5-2. They had Jovalich and, and Chicharito playing up top together. Uh, you know, the lack of wingers in this entire formation throws off any sort of semblance of really what you want from a 3-5-2. You would like a wing back with Julian Araujo to be out there, and he wasn't on the field and, and sort of to do this. Edwards was sort of the only wing back that you could put in there. Um, I'm going to tell you this. And I take my cue somewhat from Greg Vanny, but also from what I've watched from uh, from Jalen Neal so far this year is uh, Jalen Neal is the story of the preseason so far for me, Kevin. Uh, he is going to be a guy who is absolutely 100 um, percent a part of this team this year. And I think Greg Vanny has said how much he has already enjoyed him. Uh, playing, and I think that Greg Vanny is very high on him. If you've watched Jalen just conduct himself in these games, it's like he belongs out there. He'll make mistakes, things will happen, but I mean, he wasn't Sega Koulibaly and got beat on his back shoulder for the opening goal from uh, from New York City, who look like they're Houston because they're wearing orange uniforms. Again, they really have to stop that. Um, so, Jalen Neal, to me, is the story of this preseason, and I think if you're following anything, you want to watch his rise um, and see where he places himself in the depth chart because your starting back line could very well be Edwards, um, Caceres, and you know, and and Jalen Neal uh, because I don't think anybody is cemented, 
you know, their starting spot as a center back right now. And so Jalen Neal to me is a huge story. The other story, by the way, and I'll let you talk about Jalen Neal. The other story is that the galaxy need wingers and they need wingers now. Um, yeah, I've, I've, heard, I've heard that. Yeah. Wingers. Um, maybe that'd be one reason why Derek Williams was allowed to leave. Um, yeah. Is that they knew Jalen Neal was coming. I also think, you know, I still think you, you can talk about Greg Vanning, criticize him all you want. I still think he's one of the best coaches in the league without I question. And uh, I, I think he just proved it with the Jalen Neal thing. Jalen Neal comes back from the national team where he had a great camp and played really well in two games and impressed everybody. And so he comes back to the Galaxy. By the way, he has played two games for the U.S. national team and still not played an MLS game for the Galaxy. Uh, which is bizarre. So he comes back, and what does what does a uh, uh, Greg Vanny do? Doesn't say, "Hey, great camp, take take a seat on the bench and watch these guys play." No, he rushes him right out there. Absolutely perfect thing to do. You got this kid that really believes he's the next coming, and he's playing really well. Get him out there, keep him playing. And I, I would expect Jalen Neal to get an awful lot of time this this preseason. We'll see when the bell rings if he's the guy that's out there. But I, I think Greg Vanny really wants to capitalize on how good Jalen Neal feels about himself right now. And that's exactly the right thing to do. And they do look just like the Houston Dynamo. Yeah, I know. I know they do. It's it's crazy. Anyway, uh, that's beside the point. No, I, I'm really, I think that's like, I also want to say that I thought Douglas Costa had a really good second half. Listen, the second half, the Galaxy went back more into a 4 through 3 And what do you know? They they played a lot better. Um, still not the not exactly the 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 players that you want out there. Memo Rodriguez was more, seemed more than capable. Um, you had Chicharito scored a goal. Uh, you had Douglas Costa who should have scored a penalty kick. I think Greg Vanny said afterwards, that is what the, that is at this point. He had a good first game and he should not even be thinking about that penalty kick because uh, he was dynamic. He created, you know, three or four good chances in that second half. I mean, we can overstate this and I think it's dangerous to sort of pin a lot of hope on uh, on Douglas Costa. But if Costa plays well, the LA Galaxy will play well. We saw it down the stretch where when Costa can be a guy who is dangerous, who is involved, who can cut in from that right hand side, who can sort of be that guy, um, then the LA Galaxy play well when he's not when he's MIA. And this is a real question about his motivation and everything that he has when he doesn't do that. The Galaxy don't play well. Um, so, uh, I listen preseason game. What do you take out of it? You take the, the highs, take the highs out of it, which is, uh, you know, Douglas Costa played well, Jalen, well, Jalen Neal played well, Memo Rodriguez seemed to fit into whatever spot Greg Vanny wants to put him in. Uh, he cuts inside as well. Efrain Alvarez didn't have a horrible game as well. He's sort of cementing and Greg Vanny talked about his dual sided roles being either on the right side and cutting inside with his left hand or with his left foot, or whether that's playing in the middle, the same with Memo Rodriguez can sort of play in the middle and play off of those things. So I think you take the highs from this because otherwise um i I think preseason gets way too much sort of uh scooped on top of it it's it's not as important as everybody makes it it's more important that the guys are out there running more than anything we always say this every year so let's get it out of the way when does preseason matter kevin when it matters and you don't know when it's going to matter because you'll go through the whole preseason and thinking you're seeing a, uh, a window into this team and it may mean nothing especially if we expect the team to change or at least the starting lineups to change as much as we do as we go through sort of these games that are coming well look at the preseason records i can think of a number of years um i can't name them but when the Galaxy played really well in the preseason, were undefeated, and then had a t- terrible season, or vice versa, when they didn't do anything in the preseason and then went on to win an MLS Cup. So it really doesn't mean, but I do want to ask you about the penalty kick, though. Um, you know, with Sasha gone, um, you know, he was a, a good penalty kick taker. We know that Chicharito's horrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ricky Puj is kind of hit and miss. He's made some, he's missed some. Uh, Jovalik seems to be pretty good. Costa now missed one. It, isn't it a little bit? I mean, it, maybe I'm almost simplifying this, but isn't the penalty kick kind of like taking a free throw or trying to hit a uh, home run in batting practice. It, it shouldn't be that difficult. They give you, I think they give you about a 70% chance. It may even be a little higher than that, but about a 70% chance of making a penalty kick whenever you're it, out It's there. a head thing, right? The guys who miss it, like when Harry Kane skied that one in the World Cup, that's just you're, you're in your head. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, if you miss it and you don't put it on frame, then that's on you, right? And that type of thing. If you put it on frame and a goalkeeper, sometimes goalkeepers make great saves. Now, can you absolutely put something in the upper left-hand corner that nobody can save if you hit it right? Yes, absolutely. There's more error involved in that with pressure situations than than people really realize. So the guys who consistently make penalties um, are are very good at it. They practice at it. Um, I, I know that the Galaxy practice penalty kicks. I see them doing that all the time. Whenever you're out. that's one of the things they let us watch a lot of times is at the end of the at the end of the the session. Whenever we're allowed in, the guys are still out there like taking penalty kicks or doing stuff like that. So 
you know there's practice on it. Um, I just, it, it's a confidence issue more than anything. And maybe that goes to the confidence of the team. The fact the galaxy can't consistently find, you know, the guys who can bury that. And Chicharito's not that guy. And he has plenty of confidence. I mean, I never, I don't think Chicharito, but he just, he's just not a good penalty kick taker. And, you know, the Galaxy have to find their guy. I think Ricky Pooja is going to end up being their guy, to quite honestly. And I know he was hit and miss, but small sample size. You know, when, when Chicharito tried that Panenka at the end of last season, I, I got an email from a guy who was a former goalkeeper, and he told me, the, I, he said, I guarantee you that goalkeeper knew the Panenka was coming. And he said it was a stoppage time on a hot day. Chicharito had played the whole way. He's 34 years old. He said that goalkeeper knew that Chicharito was gassed. And he was going to take the easiest penalty kick possible, which was a panenka. And that's why that goalkeeper never moved. That's not an easy, I don't, so I see goalkeepers are morons most of the time anyway. <laughs> so I can, I can absolutely see that somebody would say that and, and look that way. The, it's not an easy, it's a very difficult skill to pull off. Well, um, Chicharito is just not that guy. Like you, again, you don't expect him to blast in the corners, that type of thing. We'll, we'll watch the LA galaxy and penalty kicks throughout this year. Um, as it goes. Yes, uh, we will. Because, uh, we'll be watching the games. That's how it works. Yes. Um, so anyway, unless, so, we, unless we boycott, I, well, I'm not, I don't, oh, I don't no, have that. No. I don't have that. I like, I, I'm a live soccer guy. And, and plus I'm pretty sure I'm, people were, uh, I was retweeting some of the pictures that obviously came out with the, uh, with the protests and some of the put stuff on Instagram and people were like, Oh, thanks for doing that. I'm like, well, it's news. That's why it's getting like shown. Right. I'll also retweet the, the game and I'll retweet, you know, the, the final scores and I'll retweet the stuff. I mean, it's news. That's why, that's why it's getting coverage. Um, and it'll continue to get coverage as far as I'm concerned. I think it is a huge deal. I think it's going to be a significant part. I think that the players are going to all be asked about it eventually because there's going to be a time when the LA Galaxy are going to play at Dignity Health Sports Park and the supporters groups aren't there to be banging drums on either side. They're not going to be there waving flags. The, really, what Kevin, I would consider on having gone to LA Galaxy games for 14 plus years is the heartbeat of the game, which is the supporters there are not going to be there. It's like, well, and that's why I think the supporters, if they want to have success and I don't know how they define success, but supporters aren't there in the preseason game. As you said, no one goes to preseason games, not noticeable. No one cares. They're not going to be at the Rose bowl game. There isn't a supporter section. There won't be noticed. Probably nobody will care. There'll be 70,000 people in there anyways. Everybody who cashed the checks, they'll be happy. It might be the third or fourth home game, which may be deep into into March or even into April, before management looks up and says, "Well, this is the third game in a row where this place has been a morgue. There's no there's no noise at all. Maybe we ought to go back and talk to these guys about what they want. Um, it could take that long, and and you, that's what you talk about the blinking. Um, management certainly will wait four games into the season before they panic. Uh, will the supporters go four games without because that's you know like that's two 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 and a half months from now yeah it is i mean i like i said it's going to be the long game i don't <laughs> expect this as quick um and that's sort of that's sort of the point for a lot of this is i don't expect these things to be quick and i expect it to take a long time for for all of these different uh machinations of support and different stadiums and different places and how before that is really felt like you know, I know some people are planning on possibly going to the away games because they're not boycotting the away games because that money is not going into the LA Galaxy's pocket, right? So they're going to go. Maybe there's larger support, um, you know, for the LA Galaxy in the, you know, in an away stadium than there is at home. And maybe that brings up something, um, you know, that maybe people weren't seeing before. It's just but, but that, that that money does go to the Galaxy. There is a split of the gate. It's it's yeah. it's huge. It's just like three to one or 90% or something goes to the home team, but the galaxy do get a few cent, a few centavos per yeah. dollar. Yeah. And by the way, Lex says that I think there is a supporters group at or supporters section at the Rose bowl that they've set up for both teams. So there is like an actual dedicated supporters like sections for that. So you'll be able to tell Kevin, you should be able to tell anyway. Did you hear from Jason Alexander yet about whether how many that, lives he saved? Alexander. Oh. I, I don't, I didn't see it. Alexander needs to like, uh, like put a whole bunch of exclamation park, park points. Cause I did not see it. Um, coming back. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, let's get to the, to, to, so the final two to one, we, you know, sort of wrap that up and, and that's fine. Now the LA galaxy announced today, uh, that they're releasing a kit on 216. This is happening happening at the Million Dollar Theater, which is at 307 South Broadway in Los Angeles. 
This is happening on Thursday, Kevin. Thursday. So if you had any plans this week, the LA Galaxy may have just rerouted your plans. Uh, whether that's whether you attend to go, uh, whether you are intending to go to the kit launch, or as I've already seen people saying, they're going to bo- boycott. They have now changed your Thursday night plans. I don't know if I'm going because that's usually our podcast night. So I'm thinking about well, possibly kicking the podcast and going. But, but clarify, it's not this Thursday. It's next Thursday. It's yeah, it no, is. No, yeah. no, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. It's it is next Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. So it is it is a little bit further away than I than I give him credit for. It. That's right. I was thinking I am convinced that February is almost over and apparently it just started. So I've been doing that. So I apologize. It's not that they're giving you about a week and a half to sort of get there and, and plan your Thursday nights and do all that stuff. So I'll still have to think about what I'm doing with the podcast and how that's happening um, and whether or not we're going to go to the uh, to the to the kit launch. <laughs> Uh, to, it's a to very, it it's that. a very is- interesting venue, and you and I were talking about this. The Million Dollar Theater downtown on Broadway, historic theater, um, iconic, very famous. But its heyday, it, it was built in like 1913. Its heyday was in the 70s and 80s. So before there was an MLS, the Million Dollar Theater was in decline. And you know, you talk about that sign in decline right. since 2014. Um, it, it just seems really weird that the Galaxy would pick a place that has been in decline for 50 years and say, yep, this is where we want to launch our new high tech uh, kit. And but, but it's it like hip and cool now, right? It, that's what, that's what it is. It's like a place that has the history like the LA galaxy and now is like this new version of itself. Cause it's certainly not showing, you know, broad Broadway plays and everything like that. It has its own venues. I don't know if it's a music venue anymore or, or just an event space in general. I will say, Though I laughed really, really hard whenever I saw this comment on Twitter, and I'm I'm gonna put it out there. Um, they they said you know hey million dollar stadium million dollar theaters where you wanna go and uh, Mark on Twitter uh, here says uh, by the way million dollar theater is a Freudian slip is that's the fine we had to pay for his antics and his he's talking about Chris Klein he goes that's the equivalent of forty thousand twenty five dollar tickets right so. Um, I just thought the the Freudian slip thing was was humorous. Twitter still pays for itself, being I don't pay. Pit, Twitter still pays for itself on a regular basis, Kevin, because it's there. There are some just excellent witty people out there all the time. Yeah, I don't like Elon Musk though. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. I mean, that's 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 your prerogative. But I'm just telling you that Twitter's in my mind is still well worth it with all the jokes that I see. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. You know, I think he may be onto something there. Why else pick the million dollar theater? That, I, that is pretty good because that's, better, that's better than mine. That's because, a whole better than my argument because it's like you know near downtown. It is it is sort of in part of the city. It, I was gonna say, I was gonna try to not say it, but you you said it. So um, <laughs> let's talk a little bit. There are some rumors out there. Carlos Harvey seems to have been moved to Phoenix Rising in the USL now. I have asked for clarification, and I'm waiting on clarification, whether this is a loan move or a permanent move. I'm fairly certain it already happened. Uh, in fact, there's pictures of, of Carlos Harvey um, in w- with Phoenix Rising, and I think Phoenix Rising actually has their first press event tomorrow. Um, so they will. I'm sure we will find out. Um, I've asked whether it's permanent or whether it is a loan deal, because Greg Vanny said very clearly, he said, you know, we're going to have to look at some guys because some guys are not going to fit into this MLS Next Pro you know, sort of theory that we're going with, because I think we all agree that's more of a developmental program. Um, and for somebody like Carlos Harvey, he's not necessarily a developmental project anymore. He needs minutes. He needs them at a high level. And maybe he's not going to get them with the LA Galaxy. So I could see somebody like Carlos Harvey going to Phoenix Rising on loan. Maybe it's a full year loan. Maybe it's a half year loan. Those types of things. And then being able to come back and being recalled to the LA Galaxy maybe in the summertime. Yeah. Oh, and who? By the way, who did you ask? Because that's 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 not at all in character that the galaxy would not like leap to the phone and immediately confirm something. Be, be nice. I just asked, and I was told I was I would get confirmation or I'd get answers to my questions that I had. So that is what I did. Um, so Carlos Harvey uh, possibly gone and to Phoenix Rising again, either permanent or on a loan deal. That'll probably sort itself out very quickly. Uh, the other permanent deal that happened um, that we were sort of waiting for and we kind of knew it was happening was that former uh, 2021 MLS Super Draft pick uh, Josh Drack, remember first round pick by the LA Galaxy, made 52 appearances for LA Galaxy 2, is now with Huntsville. right? So Huntsville City FC is the lower division for uh, Nashville. Okay, so now you have Josh Drack in that system, and he is no longer with LA Galaxy 2. Again, a little bit changing in the guard in terms of what is developmental, Kevin? What is MLS Next Pro supposed to be, and how do guys fit into that? And apparently Josh Drack, who was a very 
talented player, I would say, for LA Galaxy 2. Maybe he was never going to make it in Major League Soccer. Maybe that's a bridge too far for him, right? Is now no longer with the, with LA Galaxy 2. So some some changes happening there as well with Josh Track heading out. Uh, of course, Kevin, this is all to say that we have only talked about outgoing outgoing players for like most of this preseason, right? Um, and the now... Galaxy, I've only brought in two, and you mentioned both of them. Yeah. Yeah, with uh, with Memo Rodriguez and who was the other one? I can't even Mavinga. remember. Yeah, Chris Mavinga. Mavinga that's right. Uh, Mavinga in, in defense as well. So um, now we do get to talk, and you were the first on this rumor. You and I have been working this uh, for a couple days. So why don't you tell everybody what you know? And I know they already know it, but but go ahead and 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 tell them who the LA Galaxy may be close to signing here. Well, it's not the wide receiver for the. Sin- of course. Who has the same name? Yeah, try that again because you froze just okay. at the per. Of course, it, now would be the not, time. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so it's not Tyler Boyd who is the wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd, the former uh, winger midfielder for the U.S. national team, um, and he is 28 years old. Is looking for a place to play. He was in, in playing in Super League in Turkey. He has played 45 minutes since last May. Um, out of a job, asked out of his contract. The team was only too happy to let him go. He didn't seem to figure in their plans. There'd been change in management there. So um, he did not figure in their future. He hasn't started the game since I think May 9th. So yeah. he hasn't played a lot and it, has, it doesn't appear to be a guy in a lot of demand. Um, however, you know, he is a New Zealand native and recently married an American woman, I, my understanding is, and has been talking to people for months about coming back to MLS. This is a move that he is highly motivated to make. We don't know how much he has in the, in the gas tank anymore. Like I said, he's played his way out of, favor or, 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 you know, mutes management change, um, but does not have a home in Turkey, wants to come back to MLS, the galaxy, they need wingers. It's a good move from all those things. I was told that he was actually either in Los Angeles or on his way to Los Angeles this weekend. So presumably he, he missed that horrible, horrible earthquake in Turkey. I don't know if he would have been. I was just going to say that that is, that is cr- like he could have, uh, I, I imagine, and I have fingers crossed that he's already out of that, but um, what a what a horrible thing! Imagine leaving and then two days later something like that happens. That would be that would freak me out. Anyway, imagine, continue. Yeah, I mean, if that had delayed it or whatever, I mean, right. it, there's much bigger things to think about than a guy's MLS uh, physical. Right. But my understanding was he was here either in LA this weekend or on his way to get his physical. That appeared to be uh, if he passed that that was the only you know it would just be him failing the physical that would prevent the Galaxy from signing. This was already pretty much a done deal. Uh, could be announced. Um, any moment, I suppose he needs to pass the physical and then sign a contract that needs to be approved by MLS. Um, but it looks like that's the guy they want. Um, good and bad. I mean, he's a young player. He's motivated to be here in MLS. Those look to be good things. Greg Vanny wanted him. That's a good thing. I was going to say the- not only wanted them, Kevin, this was a player who was originally linked to Greg Vanny in 2021, whenever Vanny took over. So he's a guy who they've sort of he that Greg Vanny has had on his radar for at least a couple cycles here. So the fact that he's now available and unfortunately t- two years older than when he was because it was 2021 um, yeah. is is sort of like one of those things. It's like this is almost like Gaston Brugman as well, which was Greg had talked about wanting him and trying to get him and being looking at him in this in different windows. And finally, everything sort of lined up for them to get him um, in this particular case you know, uh, he's now a free agent and because he's a free agent, um, you know, the movement to the LA galaxy is fine. Um, the big deal. And I don't think you've, you mentioned it, although I'm sure you were going to is he has a history of hamstring problems. Um, and so his physical is probably more important than a lot of guys physicals, uh, to sort of see what kind of damage he has on those hamstrings and whether or not he can make it through quote unquote, 50 games of an MLS season as well. Yeah. I was not going to mention that actually. So that's good. But, uh, his, if you look at his career numbers, he seems to be in decline, could be the hamstrings, could be other things. Um, it does, it, it, you know, it, I don't even know that he's going to be, I, I'm sure he'll be a TAM signing. I don't, I don't know if he has to signing. be, because, I mean, if you look at him, I think they have, at least in transfer market, has him with a valuation of about 421,000 pounds, right? So 425 uh, euros, right? Which is roughly a dollar. It's 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 close enough. It's probably $450,000 or something like that. That's technically, uh, you know, underneath the, the TAM ceiling. So there's a good chance this could be 
you know, maybe a bargain sort of Grand Sur replacement. Remember, $900,000 is about what Grand Sur was making. This is a guy who can fit into that. You're looking at somebody who is maybe more, a little bit more of a depth piece than just an all and out starter. Oh, I think he starts now. I mean, right now, this team yes, today. Yes, right. Yes, starts. right now, you're right. But they don't but, have any but wingers. you're right. And that's kind of where I was going. This is not the guy that the, everyone's going to go, aha, the team is complete. This is it. No, this is a step forward, clearly a step forward. But maybe a baby step, you know, it's it doesn't complete the team. This is not the missing piece. This is not, you know, we're not done yet. Um, but it is a signing, and they've only had two. So anything is good at this point. Right. By the way, Alexander says that he hates that question. Um, really? Sorry, yes. Alexander. So you're mean, which is normal. Um, and uh, the response is also a fair amount. A fair amount. Oh, congratulations. Come on, it, it, um, and then Alexander followed that up with, but I love Jason Alexander. So that's, that's good. So, <laughs> so you're, you're, you're doing just fine. Uh, Boyd is a, and you know, if you're on our discord, you occasionally get little like hints from me. If I can't say something outright, I maybe won't say it on Twitter, but I'll go on discord and I'll be like, listen, there's a rumor. And then everybody will try to guess what the rumor is. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Um, the whole deal. And I, they asked me like, well, is it a, is it a good signing? Are we going to be happy about it? And I go, it's a solid signing. And I think that's what this is. I think it's a solid signing. You're a 28 year old, technically not out of his prime. Um, you said young, but young in terms of returning from Europe and coming, because at 28, you're not young. You're, you're in that prime level. I mean, realistically in two years, you would expect that that decline happens even more, but with injuries, I I would expect in two years, he's going to be 30. That's what you expect. That's good. That's good. See, and you said you couldn't figure out math. Um, so I think it's a solid signing. I like it. Domestic player doesn't take up an international slot. I mean, there's a lot of positives sort of in this that sort of work for that. Um, we'll see. I think it's going to be a positive addition. I have, I reached out to some other sources and it seems likely that this is going to be something that happens and that, you know, the signing seems like it's going to take place. I don't have that for hundred percent. Sure. We're still working on that, but that's where it's leaning and I can just sort of back up Kevin's. I can tell you as well. I know this is what people always, and I, and I do this for our listeners, but I also do this for maybe anybody in the LA galaxy front office. Who's listening to us as, as well, which is your source and my source were different people that we were they talking were. about. And so we know that. And so we know that they're different people, which allows us to even, you know, sort of wrap our hands around some of these stories even more. That's what we try to do whenever well, we do this. And stuff. here's another good thing about him. I mean, I think with Ricky Pooj, understandably, uh, with Grant Sear, with Kevin Cabral, a lot of other guys that came in, they were very young players, talented players, came to MLS to improve their their stock to go back to Europe. I, I think uh, Boyd coming at 28, he'll probably sign a two-year deal with a third-year option. He'd be 31. Mm-hmm. He's not going – I don't think he's going back to Europe. No. And I think that makes him a little bit of a better bet for the Galaxy. This is a guy who doesn't have his eyes anywhere else. He's come back to MLS uh, – or he's come to MLS. I don't know if he's ever played here before. He's coming to MLS. No. And this is where his home is going to be. And and that's a good thing for the Galaxy, too, because I do think we have seen, in, all throughout MLS, we've seen guys with their minds a little bit scattered. I want to play well here, but I need to put up numbers because I want to go there. That's not going to be Tyler Boyd's situation. If you're looking, if you want to watch highlights for Tyler Boyd, uh, you're probably going to get thrown into like 2021 or 2019 if you're if you're really looking for it. And also, you're going to want to type in Tyler Boyd soccer. Soccer, yeah, yeah, yeah. or football. I guess no, not football. You can't use football. That'll definitely get you confused in in this particular case. And, and he did play for the national team. I think it was I forget what year it was that he uh, played quite a few games in the Gold Cup, maybe 2017, 2019. I mean, there is, I, and somebody made this mention. I don't know how realistic this is. Certainly, in his current state, the answer is no. But with so many uh, U.S. games, sort of incoming and and rapidly approaching maybe Tyler Boyd coming to major league soccer is exactly what he needs. And, you know, he gets healthy and he gets the, the physical and and mental support that he needs. He suddenly becomes a player that maybe is on the cusp of getting a start or two in a gold cup game for the U S men's national team, because he's been there before. I think that's an outside chance. I think it's a real outside chance. Um, but that's, that's, that's sort of where we're at. So, um, I'm trying to see. Oh, Aaron gave us a two dollars super chat and says, uh, "My chat does not have a cape." And if that's because of super chats, right? Because he's a super. Oh, super I, chat. I get it. Aaron, I would not have gotten that one. Thank no, you. you're. So I'm, I'm. I'm used to drawing lines for you and connecting dots. Not a problem. Yes, um, and doing math. Yeah. So I mean, that, so this is where we sit now. Now we are 
you know, you're looking at the LA Galaxy. Uh, we there's going to be a game. I'm a we. I don't know. You're not going, but I'm going. I'm planning on going Sunday out to to Coachella. Uh, which by the way, LAFC called it Golchella. Go sue them. Go sue them quick. Um, on Sunday, I gotta I gotta be at Daytona. <laughs> oh, that's right. Because you're 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 a NASCAR you're a <laughs> NASCAR right. reporter now. So motorsports. That's what you do. Um, so uh, but going out to Coachella, uh, the LA Galaxy now will play. I think three games out in Coachella. Uh, then they'll return. Uh, they have one more preseason game. So now you're going to get four games in about two weeks, and then it's the week off before the LA Galaxy play uh, against LAFC uh, at the Rose Bowl. So everything now into like super quick turnarounds. This is not going to be uh, long sort of drawn out processes from here on out. I think Greg Vanny sort of said something. He was like, uh, you know, this is somebody asked him how the galaxy were playing um, or, or what he saw in the preseason. And he goes, oh, well, the LA galaxy are playing like it's their fourth or fifth week of preseason. That's how it's going. Like he's like, this is this is that 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 sort of grind right now uh, for everything that they're doing. So uh, I, you should start to see some things come together, Kevin, but without signings, I mean, I don't know if Tyler Boyd is there and waiting for, you know, the paperwork to be dry and the ink to be dry in the paperwork and he can just start training, which is a possibility with him because doesn't need the visa paperwork and probably get the ITC eventually before anything happens. So he's probably okay with that. But if you're talking about anybody else right now, uh, it feels like there's going to be a, uh, a delay between between the start of the season and when the the signings are coming in. Well, I, I think Vanny. I've been just guessing here. I think Vanny would have really liked to have him at Coachella because they're going to be sequestered. Well, you know, they're going to be away from their families. It's going to be a chance for him to get to know his teammates. You're, you're forced to be together. It's a really good team bonding thing. He can he can get a, a month's worth of preseason acclimation in in, in ten days out there and. You know, if there's not another signing, I'm sorry. He's a key piece of this team on opening day because you could put together a pretty decent lineup and have that 4-3-3 with him on one wing, Koss on the other wing, and Ricky Pooj in the middle. That That's serviceable, but they need to figure out how to work with Chicharito, and that's what that's what Tyler Boyd's going to have to do. Um, by the way, Coachella is kind of close to Vegas, so Araujo so, can make it back from his, win, his, his uh, bender over there in Vegas, and he it, could be back there to play. He could be back in like four hours, because that really cuts about yeah. two hours out of the drive whenever whenever you're thinking about it. Um, Galaxy have uh, Coachella games coming up on Wednesday, February 8th, when they host St. Louis City SC. Uh, and then they play again on Sunday, 10.30 a.m. against the Portland Timbers. And then they have one more Wednesday, February 15th, which is the day before the jersey launch, right? Uh, Wednesday, February 15th, a 10.30 a.m. Pacific time game against the New York Red Bulls. So those are your Coachella games. The Sunday one is going to be the one that is most, uh, I would imagine, is most available to LA Galaxy fans out there. Uh, no, there's not going to be any streaming of of those games from there. I think there could possibly be some radio. We'll see. Um, but there could possibly be some radio from Joe Totino um, out there. And if you notice, Joe Totino did a call of the LA Galaxy streaming on YouTube. Uh, they had a lot of cameras in the stadium, Kevin. It was it was interesting. They put out a highlights uh, package today for the game uh, that missed Douglas Costa's uh, missed penalty kick and, and they missed New York City's second goal. But there are a lot of there were about seven or eight or maybe even nine or ten different angles of Chicharito's goal that he scored. There were a lot of cameras out there, and I just wonder why we're not seeing games streamed. Uh, Hammer made a good point. He said, uh, I have a relative who's out of state who sent me the link to their kid's uh, baseball game that is being streamed, and I can watch that, but I can't watch the LA Galaxy in a preseason game. Again, I was told that at least at one point that there was sh that there was possibly going to be infrastructure put in place at Coachella to be able to stream these games. Um, but that doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So, so if someone scores a goal on Wednesday, what do you call it? What do you mean? Why? Why is it? Would it be a goal? Cella? You're what you're. No, we're not getting sued. I'm not getting sued. <laughs> I want to be very I, I clear. Just, I was just musing. I know you're not allowed to muse. Don't. Okay. I'm not getting sued. I, I think it's 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 humorous up to the point until like uh, Golden Voice decides to sue everybody for using that. I, how term. about if we instead of okay? How about a Cogola? Did they uh, trademark that one? I think we're done here. Uh, LA Galaxy heading off to Coachella here shortly, uh, and then again only 19 days until they face off against LAFC. Kevin, is there any? You know, I'm almost afraid to ask, but is there anything else you want to talk about? No, before? I'm going to bring Tony Stewart back, and he's going to have a date with um, 
with Alex Morgan here. They're gonna they're going off. Uh, there you go. I'm I'm glad that we were once again. Don't don't tell Servando. Yeah, I was gonna say that's that's not a good look. All right, if you're looking for Mr. Kevin Baxter on Twitter, it's at kbaxter11. Head on over to latimes.com for all his writing. His newsletter comes out in the morning, probably one that you want to read. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at jgesman, j g u e s m a n. And of course, at Galaxy Podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com for all of our wonderful coverage there. Uh, if you're at Disneyland tomorrow, come say hi to me. I'll be there. Uh, other than that, I hope everybody has a good week. We'll be back on Thursday uh, where we can talk a little bit more about the LA Galaxy and what has happened so far at Coachella. All right. Hope everybody has a wonderful next couple of days. We'll be back on Thursday night. I don't know who my co-host is, but I'll figure that out eventually. For Mr. Kevin, the Panda Baxter, I'm Josh Pato Gessman. You've been listening. You've been watching our little Corner of the Galaxy from the box. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening. And we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.